In Lesson 8.2, you will graph simple rational functions. A rational function has the form f of x equals p of x over q of x. p of x and q of x are polynomials, and q of x, because it's in the denominator, cannot equal 0. The graph of this function is going to be a hyperbola, and it's going to have branches. That's what we'll look for. And when we graph this first function, y equals 4 over x, the first thing we want to find is the asymptotes. So the vertical asymptote we're going to find by letting that denominator equal 0 and solving for x. So we find x equals 0 is our vertical asymptote, which happens to be the y-axis. So I'll sketch that in. Okay, and now we want to find the horizontal asymptote. And to do that, we compare the degrees of the polynomials in this rational function. The top polynomial is a constant polynomial 4. It has degree 0. The bottom polynomial is x raised to the first power, so it has degree 1. Because the top polynomial has a degree that's less than the degree of the bottom polynomial, we know that the x-axis, or y equals 0, is our horizontal asymptote. So now I'll sketch that in. The branches of our hyperbola are going to approach these asymptotes. So to find those branches, now we make a table of values. And in for x, we choose some values that are left of the vertical asymptote and right of the vertical asymptote. So I'm going to choose negative 4, negative 2, negative 1 to the left. And I'm going to choose 1, 2, and 4 to the right of that vertical asymptote. Now when I put negative 4 into the function for x, I have 4 over negative 4. That's negative 1. When I put negative 2 in for x, I have 4 divided by negative 2. That's negative 2. And when I put negative 1 in for x, 4 over negative 1 is negative 4. Okay, when I put positive 1 in for x, I get 4 over 1. That's 4. When I put 2 in, 4 divided by 2 is 2. And when I substitute 4 in for x, I have 4 over 4. That's 1. So we'll graph these ordered pairs on the coordinate plane. Negative 4, negative 1. Negative 2, negative 2. And negative 1, negative 4. So this branch follows its asymptotes, turns through those points that we just graphed, and lies completely in the third quadrant. Okay, on the other side of the vertical asymptote, we're graphing 1, 4. 2, 2, and 4, 1. So again, this branch follows its asymptotes, turns through those points, and lies completely in the first quadrant. Okay, when we compare this graph with the graph of the parent function, y equals 1 over x, we say it's a stretch. And we can tell it's a stretch because of that 4 in the numerator. That 4 is greater than 1, so it's causing a stretch or these branches of the hyperbola to be further from the asymptotes. Here we have another rational function to graph, and the first thing we're going to do is find its asymptotes. The vertical asymptote, remember, we find by setting the denominator equal to 0 and solving for x, so I get a vertical asymptote of x equals 1, and I'll graph that vertical line that crosses the x-axis at 1. Okay, and then to find the horizontal asymptotes, we compare the degrees of the top and bottom polynomials. The top polynomial is 3, a constant uh, polynomial. Again, it has degree 0. The bottom polynomial is x minus 1, and x is raised to the first power, so that polynomial has degree 1. Since the top polynomial is less than the, uh, the degree of the top polynomial is less than the degree of the bottom polynomial, we would expect the x-axis, or y equals 0, to be our horizontal asymptote again. But because of that k value, there's a shift up two units. There's 2 added to our fraction in our function, so we know that our asymptote, horizontal asymptote, is shifted up two units. So instead of y equals 0, it's y equals 2. So I'll sketch that. 
horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at 2. Okay, and now we need to find the branches of our hyperbola. So we'll make a table of values. And in the table, I need to choose values for x that are left of the vertical asymptote and right. So I'm going to choose negative 2, negative 1, and 0 to the left. To the right, I'm going to choose 2, 3, and 4. And solve for x. So when I put negative 2 in for x, we're going to solve for y. I'm going to put negative 2 in for x, so negative 2 minus 1 in the denominator is negative 3, so I have 3 over negative 3, which is negative 1, and negative 1 plus 2 is 1. Okay, now put negative 1 in for x, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, so I have negative 3 halves added to 4 halves, that's 1 half. 0 in for x, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, 3 divided by negative 1 is negative 3, and negative 3 added to 2 is negative 1. Okay, 2, 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 over 1 is 3, and 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay, put 3 in for x, 3 minus 1 is 2, so I have 3 halves added to 4 halves, that's 7 halves. And now put 4 in for x, 4 minus 1 is 3, 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Okay, so here's our points, our ordered pairs that we can graph. Negative 2, 1, close to our asymptote. Negative 1, 1 half. And 0, negative 1, a y-intercept. So this branch follows the asymptotes, turns through those points. Okay, and on the other side of our vertical asymptote, we're graphing 2, 5. 3, 3 and a half, and 4, 3. So again, our branch follows the asymptotes, turns through those points, and lies in that first quadrant. Okay, we need to state domain and range. Domain for this function is going to be x values not equal to 1 because that's where we find our, our vertical asymptote, x cannot equal 1, or that gives us a denominator of 0, and we can't divide by 0. The range is y values not equal to 2 because that's where we find our horizontal asymptote, and we will never get a y value of 2 for this function. Okay, we have another function here, rational function to graph, and we're going to find vertical asymptotes first by setting that denominator equal to 0 and solving for x. So 3x plus 3 equals 0. When we solve for x, we get 3x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 1. Okay, now I'm going to graph that vertical asymptote. I'm going to change my uh, labeling on my axes here. I'm going to go negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3 to the left. I'm going to go 1, 2, and 3 to the right. And up I'll label 1, 2, and 3, and down negative 1, negative 2 and negative 3. Every three tick marks I have a label, a whole number, or an integer. Okay, so graphing x equals negative 1, that's a vertical line that crosses the x-axis at negative 1. Okay, and now looking for the horizontal asymptote, we compare the degrees of the top and bottom polynomials. The degree of the top polynomial, since it's x minus 2 and x is raised to the first power, is 1. The bottom polynomial is 3x plus 3, and x again is raised to the first power, so the degree of that polynomial is 1. Since these degrees are equal, we know that our horizontal asymptote has to be of the form y equals a over b, and a and b are the leading coefficients of the polynomials top and bottom. 
a is the leading coefficient of the top polynomial, so since that's 1x in the numerator, our leading coefficient is 1. In the denominator, our leading coefficient is 3, since our first term is 3x. So we get a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1 third, and this is exactly why I changed the scale uh, on our axes, because we need to graph the horizontal line that crosses the y-axis at 1 third. Okay, now we're ready to make our table of values so that we can find the branches of our hyperbola. So left of that vertical asymptote, I'm going to let my uh, x values be negative 4, negative 3, and negative 2. To the right, I'm going to let my x values be 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so now when x is negative 4, I have negative 4 minus 2 in the numerator, that's negative 6. In the denominator, I have negative 4 times 3, which is negative 12. And negative 12 plus 3 is negative 9. So this is going to simplify to 2 thirds. Okay, when x is negative 3, we have negative 3 minus 2 in the top, that's negative 5. I have negative 3 times 3, or negative 9, in the denominator plus 3. That's negative 6, so I'm getting 5, 6 for a y value. Now let x equal negative 2. Negative 2 minus 2 in the top is negative 4. In the bottom, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, and negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3. So I'm getting 4 thirds. Okay, now let x equal 0. We get negative 2 in the top and 3 in the bottom, so negative 2 thirds x is 1, we have 1 minus 2 in the top, that's negative 1, and 1 times 3 in the denominator is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6, so I'm getting negative 1, 6. And when x is 2, 2 minus 2 in the top is 0, and 0 divided by anything is 0. Okay, so I'm ready to graph my ordered pairs. Negative 4, 2 thirds is going to put me out here, I'm going to approximate that point. Okay, and then negative 3, 5, 6, negative 3, 5, 6, 2, 4, 5, 6 will be right here. Okay, and then negative 2, 4 thirds, negative 2, 1 third, 2 third, 3 thirds, 4 thirds. Okay, and then I'll draw my branch through those points and approaching the asymptotes. Okay, to the right of that vertical asymptote, I can graph 0, negative 2 thirds. And I can graph 1, negative 1, 6. 1, negative 1, 6. Okay, get that in the right spot. And then 2, 0, an x intercept. So here's my branch following the asymptotes, turning through those points. Domain and range. Domain is all x not equal to negative 1 because that is where our uh, vertical asymptote is and if x is equal to negative 1 we have a denominator of 0 and we can't divide by 0. Okay, range, y cannot equal 1 third because that's where our horizontal asymptote crosses the y-axis. We'll never get a y-value of one-third for this function. Include with your notes of this video guided practice problems 1, 3, and 5 on pages 559 and 561 of your textbook.